Now to begin to demystify grow lights and how complicated it seems, you really only need to know three things. The first is what type of light it is. The second is what spectrum capabilities it has. And third is how much power it's using. So for types, there's only a few. You have incandescent, you have fluorescent, and then LEDs. The long story short is that LEDs are the best. The first reason is because LEDs draw less power and so they're just more affordable to use. And the second reason is because they don't really compromise on the quality and spectrums of light they can produce. And as a bonus reason, they give off less radiation. So this is an EMF reader and I've had this for a while. Watch what happens when I turn this on. Immediately it starts going off because lights give off radiation. I actually have some clothing that I get that I wear under this, uh, which is like silver lined and just will help block some of those EMFs. There's other cool technology, but the point is that I also was attracted to LEDs because of that. And I figured I'd tell you that because that's the truth. You don't really hear people talk about that much. So now into the second thing you need to know about wavelength and spectrum. The long story short is that light is a photon which travels as a wave. And when we're talking about wavelength, that just means how big or small the oscillation of the wave is. As waves get bigger or smaller, they also change in color. And this is what we mean when we're talking about a color spectrum. Because indoor farming and these lights are really a science, they get really specific because some wavelengths are better for germination while others are great for fruiting or blooming. And so really what you need is a full spectrum grow light because a full spectrum grow light will offer the types of light that work in all stages of a plant's life cycle. Now I use two different types of grow lights in my indoor farm. For the microgreen racks, I'm using Barina T8 full spectrum grow lights. If you just wanna start growing, these are the types of lights that you need. Using these lights, I've grown a variety of crops. I mean, like over half a dozen microgreens, herbs, six different types of lettuce, I even start my outdoor garden under these lights for things like peppers, tomatoes, squash. They just provide the well-rounded need for pretty much anything you're going to be doing. Now these are four foot T8s. I've also used the T6s and I think I have some T3s or T4s. Get the length that fits whatever types of racks or places you're going to grow in. You don't want to get lights that are too big or too small. And if you keep those in mind, that's also going to help you choose the right light. However, if you are going to do something in a larger operation, that's where these overhead best fub 4000 VP Pro lights will come in. I actually pulled one off here because it's sort of hard to see just how large this light really is. Now, this is a professional grow light, which comes with some additional features I want to tell you about. So number one, this has red strips, which will provide more red wavelengths of light, which is useful in the blooming and fruiting stage. It also has an adjustable feature to where I can make it more of a white full spectrum light and then adjust that to using more of the red, the blue wavelengths when it enters into the fruiting stage. You can also adjust how bright it'll be, which also adjusts how much energy it's using and these are just really nice features to have when you're doing something of this scale. And they get even more complicated, but that's pretty much what you need to know, right? What types of lights, the LEDs, what types of wavelengths, which full spectrum is best, but you can get ones that have red or more bluish lights. And all this said, the last thing we need to talk about is power consumption. How much energy is your light going to use? The Vespa BP Pros pull up to 400 watts each. The Barina T8s only pull 42. And when you know how many watts your light is going to pull and how many hours a day it's going to run, my farm runs at 16 on and eight off, then you can take that number and multiply it times whatever your cost is per watt and get a great idea of how much it's going to cost to actually run these lights. And when I first started this, I was expecting it to be like a lot higher. And maybe this is because I came right out the gate using LEDs, but I've been really happy with the cost. Now I'm thinking as a business, right? Running it for a profit. And if you were using like Barinas and you were only doing two or four lights, it really becomes negligible. 
I mean, it may be an extra 20, 30 bucks a month, but that's so worth it if you just want to start growing some of your own lettuce and spinach and herbs. And that pretty much covers it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, if it's given you value, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one.